Hey, what's going on, people? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you are doing well. And welcome back to another Chelsea news video. Today, I'm talking about Kurt Zuma, Reese James, and N'Golo Kante. But before we get into the player news today, if you're a returning visitor to my channel and you have not yet subscribed, I would like to request that you subscribe to my channel and hit that bell notification icon, please. Right, first up today, we're talking about Kurt Zuma, the French centre-back. I've spoken about Kurt a few times on my channel and how I rate him really, really highly and how he's in a good part of his career and he's basically in good form and he's in great condition. Now, news has surfaced over the last sort of 24 hours or so that Kurt Zuma has handed in or is about to hand in a transfer request to Chelsea Football Club to force a move or a permanent transfer to Everton. Now, disclaimer off the bat, FYI, this could be absolute nonsense nonsense i'll talk about what i think in a second but it could be nonsense this story was reported in the daily star you know classic tabloid but whether i think this is true or not let me put a pin in that but these kind of stories can get released by any party from any camp or club with any agenda you know what i mean this happens in like spanish and italian football all the time in the media <laughs> what happens in english media all the time stories come out to unsettle clubs players whatever this could be an instance of that it might not be personally i think this could be a little bit believable or there could be truth in it for a couple of reasons firstly Zuma might not feel like he's going to be a starter for Chelsea. No matter how highly some Chelsea fans rate him, even the coach, I'll get onto that in a second, um, there's, the, there's a lot of centre-backs at Chelsea at the moment. Chelsea play a two-centre-back system. At, as it stands, the two starting centre-backs were uh, Rudiger and Louise being rotated with Christensen. They're the sort of three starting center backs and Frank has arrived and he's brought with him Tomori who is like his boy that he loved at Derby so Kurt Zuma might suddenly feel like well there's four center backs there that Frank might prefer over me regardless to what he says and if he looks at this season he just had at Everton a highly successful season at Everton he's absolutely one of the first names on the team sheet and he will always start in the center back pairing uh, certainly always in the back line regardless um, he had a really great season at Everton and if you look at Everton he's like right I'm a starter here I'm really appreciated here like massively there will be no like oh maybe we should rotate Kurt out absolutely the fans love him so he's really really appreciated he's a starter Everton are a good side they've got a good coach in Marco Silva and all in all Everton are a good project so he can speculate about whether he'll start or not at Chelsea, whether he'll be used in the Cups, whether he'll be, uh, you know, an asset in training or maybe eventually sold after not playing much. So he might have a little bit of um, apprehension of staying at Chelsea when he looks at the success he's had at Everton, looks at a positive project. Um, you know, people, there will be some people that say Everton have just a a good chance of doing just as well as Chelsea next season while Chelsea are in a rebuild phase some people might say that and you know like I said he's a starter and all that nonsense so that was my first point on why I think it's believable or could be believable all those tangible factors from Kurt's perspective but another reason in me thinking there might be some truth in this is Frank's recent highly positive comments on Kurt Zuma where he came out and said that massive spiel about how he likes him he wants him he's a Chelsea player he wants him he really likes him something like that I said it in my last video um, it was really really assertive I don't want to say overly assertive but it very much stamped authority down kind of like why is he being so overly assertive about Zuma. I mean, it was great to hear and it was a really positive message, but now this transfer request room has come up. They do sort of go hand in hand a little bit. Um, whether it's an actual transfer request or not, maybe Kurt's voiced some serious concerns about his position at the club next season and Frank's come out like that. So anyway, all in all, I don't know if, there's, if this is a true story or not, but I'm just you know painting out the picture of how there might be some caution in how uh, Zuma approaches the next season whether he wants it to be at Chelsea 
or Everton, but there's no disrespect to Chelsea by him doing this. You know, it, it's probably just looking at his career in a tangible, pragmatic way, you know. Um, he might prefer, if he, if he was promised a starting spot at both clubs, I feel like he'd choose Chelsea, you know. And for all we know, there could be a happily ever after here where everyone's happy. Could happen. But what do you think? Would you be sad to see Zuma go? I certainly would be. Do you see him as a starting centre back for Chelsea? Or do, would you rotate him in? Or let me know your thoughts in the comments below on Kurt Zuma. Right, my next story is on Chelsea youngster Rhys James. Now, Palace have bid for Rhys James. They need a Wambasaka replacement. Uh, they got about 50 million for Aaron Wambasaka, if memory serves. Um, who's, to be honest, 50 mil to United or whatever it is. It sounds like a lot, but for me, well, he is the best defensive right back in the Premier League at present. Statistically, Aaron Wambasaka. He's an excellent player. I watched him again recently. So, so good. Anyway, Palace need a replacement of some quality in that position. And they've bid £20 million to Chelsea for Rhys James. Now, for an uneducated football fan, they might go, what? Rhys James, a teenager, didn't he do one loan in the championship last season? And they're offering £20 million as an opening bid. Whoa! But, you know, no. The truth is, Chelsea should absolutely hold on to Rhys James at all costs, in my opinion. I did a video on why I think Reese James could eventually become the best right back in the Premier League and if you have not seen that video I would urge you to go and watch it. I'm going to put it in the card above one of these corners. Go and watch that after this video ideally. Thing is with Reese James, he is an incredibly talented player already. If you have seen that video that I did on him you'll know how amazing he was for Wigan and how important he was and how he was recognised as the best right back in the championship. And, you know, he played in midfield and all sorts. He's a really, really talented player. He's dominating, he's strong, he's quick, he's technical. And for me, he could very, very quickly become Chelsea's starting right back and then be in that position for a decade or whatever, a very, very long time. So not only is the monetary value so so high for Chelsea in terms of what he's worth to them but he also came through the Chelsea Academy and knows what it means to be a Chelsea player and play with you know other teammates that were in the Academy and stuff so it's really really important that Chelsea hold on to Reese James regardless in my opinion I mean you can't put a price on all that stuff. Okay, my third and final story today is on N'Golo Kante. Kante has been sent back to London from pre-season in Japan. Now, he was expected to feature out in pre-season, but apparently things have changed, which is worrying, and he's been sent back to Cobham for rehabilitation. This is in relation to an injury that I believe is in his knee that he sustained at the end of last season. Now, Kante played through injury in the Europa League final, and I, for one, do not critique Sari for playing N'Golo Kante in that final because although he was still injured he played so incredibly well Chelsea beat London rivals Arsenal 4-1 in a European Cup final um, securing a trophy and condemning their rivals to Thursday night football it was a great performance by Kante and if it just has extended his injury just a little bit longer I don't blame Sarri for it and for me Kante was instrumental in that win saying that it is worrying though because if he was meant to feature and he's not, it's there's obviously concern there and plans changed. But for for me, hopefully that Chelsea are just being extra cautious with N'Golo Kante. And you could you could forgive them for, for doing so. Obviously you want arguably your most talented player or one of your best players to be safe, but if you look at how at the end of last season Chelsea sustained a lot of injuries in a short amount of time, perhaps they're just being incredibly, not paranoid, but cautious now. You know, when Kante joined both hudson Adoy and Loftus-Cheek on the injury list, it seemed like for a moment they were dropping like flies. And the last thing Chelsea will want is for Kante's injury to become a long-term one like Ruben Loftus-Cheek's. That would be disastrous. Frank Lampard, the coach, absolutely loves N'Golo Kante and is so excited to be working with him. So I feel like he probably wants him to be absolutely 100% safe, as in not to make the injury worse, but recovered by the time the domestic season starts. So N'Golo Kante can be playing for the opening game at Old Trafford. So that's pretty much it on N'Golo Kante. It's just an injury update. Hopefully he is okay and it's just a precautionary measure, but everyone keep everything crossed for N'Golo Kante. All right, everyone, that's the end of my news video. Well, certainly play a news video. Did you enjoy it? I hope you did. Like the video if you did. Um, I want you to comment down below with all your thoughts on the thing.
things I've said about the players. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Is there anything else that I've missed? Get down in the comments and let me know. And of course, if you have not yet, please do subscribe to the channel. Little thank you also to everyone helping me get over 8,000 subscribers. Very exciting. It seems to be going up really quickly all the time. So I'm pleased you guys are enjoying my content. If you do want to support my content or support my channel and allow me to keep making content, Please do donate to my Patreon, one dollar a month is all it is. One dollar and you gain exclusive access to videos and stuff that I'm doing for my patrons. I'm going to do like private live streams where I just chat to you guys about football and Chelsea and all sorts of stuff. So one dollar a month, link is in the description. Um, what else? Oh yeah, you can follow me on my Instagram, at Football Yannick. It's just like my Twitter, at Football Yannick. That's it guys, I hope you enjoy the football and I'll see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle. Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper, sorry I don't. I let me back.